Shout, I shall be fruitful. Say, I am fruitful. So let's look at Psalm 92 from 12, 13, and 14. The righteous shall flourish. This year you will flourish. Like the palm tree, he shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. You know Lebanon, right? Those that be planted in the house of the Lord, this year may you be planted in the house of the Lord, shall flourish in the courts of our God. In other words, when you stay in the house of God this year, you will flourish in the things of God. They shall bring forth, this is what I'm talking about, they shall bring forth fruits. In old age, they shall be fat and flourishing. They shall still bring forth fruits. In old age, they shall be fat and flourishing. Can I hear amen? If you read the Bible, you will notice from Genesis chapter 1, 11, that the first thing God did for man was God blessed man, Genesis 1, 11, and said, let the, um, no, before he came to man, let's do this. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in himself upon the earth, and it was so. Say, I have the seed in myself. I didn't hear you. Say, I have a seed in myself. If you don't get this, the rest of the teaching will not work. Say, I have the seed in myself. Say, I have the seed of success in me. I have the seed of breakthrough in me. I have the seed for bearing children in me. Good. Now, so now that you have that, when God created man, one of the first things he said to man is that man, he blessed man and said, be fruitful. Be what? And what? And then replenish the earth. Say, God wants me to be fruitful. I didn't hear you. So Genesis 1 to 2, and God went to and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply on the earth. Say, I'm going to be blessed. I asked myself this question early this morning. Between five and six, I asked myself a simple question. And the question I asked was, God, what is the sign that somebody is blessed? What is the sign that somebody is blessed? So if someone says, I bless you, and those of you who came last in the week, I have a teaching that when Abraham was old, he called all his children, the one with Hagar, the one with Keturah, and he gave them gifts. And he asked them, bye-bye, go. Then he called Isaac his son, and he blessed him. And he called Isaac and blessed him. Now, so what is the sign that you are blessed? Three things. If a person is blessed, the first sign you see on the person's life that the person is fruitful. The next thing is that the person has the ability to multiply their fruition. The fruit easily multiplies. Number three, the person is able to replenish, take over. Now, I know you have been saying, I am blessed, I am blessed. Every day of my life, I am blessed. When I wake up in the morning, I live my life to rest, I am blessed. Abraham, blessings have I. Wait a minute. Look at the man Abraham carefully. That God came to me in Genesis chapter 12 and said, um, I will leave your father and mother and I will bless you. And you will see that three things happened in the Abraham's life. He was number one, fruitful. He was multiplying and was replenishing the earth. Now, if we say fruit, somebody is fruitful, most often people become confused because when we say somebody is fruitful, we only look at childbirth. 
Genesis 28, verse 4, please. Blessed shall that be in the fruit of your body. Say, fruit of the body. So, what is the fruit of the body? You can talk about fruit of the body about childbirth. Then he said again, let's read on. And the fruit of thy ground. And the third fruit was talking about was what? And the and fruit of thy cattle. And the increase of thy kin. And the flocks of thy sheep. So, when we say somebody is bearing fruit, it is not only because the person has children. But you see, what Satan has done to many of us is that you have children, but you don't have money. But today, I want to trust God as somebody who has a complete blessing. Your amen is not here at all. Where if you have ten children, you will have the businesses to take care of the ten children. You will have the ground, you have lands and properties that your children will also have. So God said that you shall be fruitful in your body. Fruitful in the ground. Fruitful in your cattle. That is business. Ground is land, property. I want to say something, but if I say it, you will not be happy, but I'll say it because I want you to make you angry. You will not die without buying a portion of this earth. You must own lands before you vacate this earth, else you won't die. So when you want to die, tell them, give me land for free. <laughs> you want to have land, then I can when you realize that you are 108, 120, and you are not dying, call your children and say that you want me to go. Buy land for me and put my name on it that is for me, I will go. Because if you stab me, I won't die. <laughs> May God bless your ground. May God bless the work of your hands. And may God make your womb fruitful. You know, you know sometimes the enemy deceives us and makes portions and part of our life fruitful and we are like oh but maybe we are we need but maybe me I have land but this one has children this one has children me I don't have a child but at least I have a land and this one says I don't even have a land but my businesses are prospering your prosperity is not complete you must have fruition in your body you must be fruitful in the work of your hands. You must also possess territories. And may this threefold of blessings be released on somebody who is believing with me and shouting an amen. I didn't hear your amen. So last week, I'm um, no, I think during the week, I was teaching you that a man can be fruitful and not know he's fruitful. How? Abraham, called by God, goes to a land, meets the king Abimelech, and Abraham knew. As to how he got to know, he told his wife that, sweetheart, you are so beautiful. I'm an old man. I don't think these people will spare me if they find out that you are my wife. So let's say you are my sister. That should first tell you that at that level, Abraham was blessed with a wife, but didn't have the capacity to handle the enemies that were around. I asked myself the question, where were the trained servants of Abraham? Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? That you have to lie that your wife is your sister and can you just imagine that you see your wife being wedded they wedded Sarah. They did engagement. They did wedding. Abraham took a contagious, took dairy, took land, took property. And the woman took their wife to the room. And as soon as they entered the room, God said, your manhood cannot flourish. You know, and not only the man, everybody in the palace so that nobody can, oh God, Nobody can impregnate 
Sarah, because if anybody impregnates Sarah, then the promise of God to Abraham will not be fulfilled. So God said, yes, Abraham, you have made a mistake, but not only the king's manhood will not perform, but anybody in the palace cannot function because I believe in fusion. May nobody take what is yours from you. So Abimelech wakes up. That sweetheart, honeymoon time. Nothing is working. Now, let me tell you this. Does God close wombs? Yes. That can, I can give you two more. That God closed the womb. And if a man has the ability to close, then you have the ability to open the Bible said, and when God realized that Leah was hated, he closed the womb of Rahel. Let me tell you this. Be careful about hatred. Hatred can close certain doors that you never know. Hatred. Hatred. Especially let me say this one in, in, in chi. Malice. Okay, mankachi. <laughs> Otai hunu arakwa. Otai ya. E I don't know why I don't like this brother. I want to see him. I want to vomit. You are closing a womb somewhere. I think you are closing the womb of the belly or the womb of the ground or the womb of a business. Second Samuel chapter 6. Be spiteful of men and women of God or people God has raised can close your womb. You are married to the king and so what? This woman called Micaiah saw David dancing before the Lord and disdained this man in his heart. Was spiteful towards him. And she will not even keep quiet. When the man came, the husband came, he said, sweetheart, come, come, come. How can a king like you dance with young girls in public? You were a disgrace. And your dress was wearing and you were not even looking at it. And the girls were looking at you. David didn't say anything. David didn't curse her. But God closed her womb. You see, Sometimes when you see people prospering, don't just lift your voice when they seek it through. Many have despised. Listen, if God prospers brother A and say this one is Juju, God can't help you because you think it is Juju. So that door can never be your door. Yeah. And all these ladies that are driving at the your bottom power. If God has given you bottom power, like me too, I will get it. So you believe it's bottom. Go and hide artificial bottom and put it there. If it bicycle time, you can buy. That womb has closed. Now the person might not say anything. The person will not insult you. The person will not curse you. By your spiting of the person. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor stands in the ways of sinners. Nor sits in the seats of their scornful. Don't sit with people who laugh at great people. Disconnect. Your desire must be in the teeth of the Lord. And the Lord you made, and you shall then be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And whatsoever thing you do shall prosper. Why? You are bearing fruit. Many people are not making it in life because of association. You see, if you sit with people who laugh at great people, and you don't even say something, the fact that you sit with them, you have condoned it. 
You can never laugh at the anointed and be anointed. Eh? Eh? This is that the you may catch her. You catch her so turn you may not be any day. Then you all share in secret. You never can sing like that person until you go to the person and tell the person, "I love the way you sing." The day you can appreciate the person. If you don't, if, if I go and say that this person is very anointed, you should pray for me. If for that, I'm somewhere. So me, I don't even go to him. But I, every day I will watch his video and me to I get the impartation. You are not getting any impartation. Stop the anointing. Anything you don't appreciate will depreciate you. If you see a lady, you see the body, you like some. Tell this lady, ah, your body is nice. God has blessed you. So, it's because I've been doing some exercise. Be, can I teach you some? You, you don't know that it's exercise. You go and do artificial. Some I can. Very soon you are working at one high, one low. Now, my headache with Abraham is that how can Abraham be with his wife? Hear me carefully, oh. Hear me carefully. I've thought of this for almost one week. And the wife can't give birth. She says the wife is the sister. Are you with me? And God cast off the fertility of the whole family so that there cannot be any sexual intercourse. The man gets up in the morning and tells Sarah, you see, unbelievers sometimes are wiser than the children of light. When she woke, the man woke up and his crowbar was not working. The first thing that came to his head is that the property in my hand is not my property. If it is you, you go for prayer meeting. You see, the first thing that came to this case in mind is that you are somebody's wife. That is why it is not working. So he called Abraham and said, Abraham, why did you deceive me? You told me your wife. <laughs> Actually, it's my sister because we are from one family side, my standard family. God told the king, go to Abraham and let him pray for you. Can I have the scripture? Last I gave it. The Lord has closed up all the wombs of the household. All. Because of Sarah. And God told Abimelech, go to Abraham. He said, prophet, wait a minute. The first prophet recorded in the Bible was Abraham. Let me tell you this. These days, I don't know which people are called prophets. God told him, he's my prophet. Let him give it to you. Go to him and let him pray for you. Now, Genesis 13, Abraham had bodyguards. There comes a time when your physical bodyguard, oh king, can't save you. There comes a time your prayer warriors can't pray for you. There comes a time the people say they are praying for you, they can't pray for you. You must take your destiny into your own hands. I'll get there very soon. About fruition. You see, somebody can impregnate your wife for you. Listen, if anybody gives you money, that can make you prosper. Anybody who gives you money is all is doing one thing. It's watering your seed. Nobody can give you the seed to succeed because when God created man, he put in man the seed that can make him fruitful. So if anybody gives you one seed, two seeds, they didn't make you. They are just the people who are watering. But the problem with most of us is that we don't even know we carry a seed. How could Abraham pray for this whole family? And they were all healed. But he couldn't pray for himself or his wife to take seed. That's a mystery. There comes a breakthrough that is corporate. And there comes a breakthrough that is independent. I will explain. If you look at the first family, Abraham, Isaac, no, Abraham, Isaac, yeah, and Sarah, 
God needed to prove each of them independently. Because what God wants to do, he wanted to give them a family name. And when God wanted to give them a family name, God cannot be based on their thing on, it is Abraham alone. Sarah has a role to play. Isaac has a role to play. There comes a breakthrough where your family, the one who is rich, is the, is the man. The woman is very poor. Excuse me, if you want to buy eyeshadow, you have to ask money. They are children whose parents are very rich. By age, age 45, the car they are driving is for their mother. They don't have a car. Because they don't have prosperity of their own. Their prosperity is based on their father or their mother. But there comes a time when God wants to make the father rich, the mother rich, and the children rich. Because all of them are potential seed carriers to the next level. And I want to tell you that this year, God will make everything connected to your life successful. If you are the one I'm preaching to shout yes. So Abraham goes home to meet the wife. Two people who made mistake. Today, when I read the Bible, I respected this woman nobody respect called Rebecca. You might not like her. She knew the mind of God. She knew the strategy of God to get a blessing. Abraham tells, God tells Abraham, your seed will still succeed. Say, I have a seed in me. If God gives you a seed and you plant it the wrong place, it doesn't bear fruit. You can't grow corn in a desert land. Then you need to turn that desert to a, a, water, a water land. Because the nutrition in the soil is not good. Some things don't bear fruit when you are connected to the wrong society. Listen, you can marry and that will be the end of your life. You can marry and that will be the beginning of your mind. I know you are confused now, but let me go on. Abraham, you shall, your, Eliezer shall not take your, 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 destiny, your inheritance. The one from your loins. Now, how did God say the one from your loins? Let me tell you this. When God looked at everything, everything was supposed to, God told everything to what? To what? Multiply what? To what? Be fruitful. Say, I'm, say be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish. But God watched Aja Adam. God saw you that whilst even plants were multiplying, Adam alone was not multiplying. So God said, Adam, why is everybody multiplying and you are not multiplying? And God saw that it was because Adam was alone. What does it mean to be alone? Adam had not discovered that inside the seed is also a womb. So God, oh God. God brought seed out and separated the seed from the womb because when they were together they could not acclimatize and get a, their fruit chain coming so god said whatever i will do to you so that you can bear fruit i'm going to do so god said seed move here womb move here and the two of them were separated now adam saw the womb and said this shall be the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh no matter what you do to me my connection is in your life whether you are going to be angry whether you are going to be happy whether you like me whether you don't like me for me to become fruitful i must connect to you but though we are not the same you are softer you are lighter i am heavier i make decision you listen to me but we have the connection without the two we cannot make full sin that's why i said hatred can cost you your miracle the one that you make you successful you don't like the person and i can can i prophesy god has watched you all your life you are too lonely this year, God will separate and show you that the thing you need to start bearing fruit is inside you. May God expose it to you. May God expose it to you. Listen, I have the ability to see people and see their 10 years from today. That is fruition. You see people as a seed. Seeds never look their, their masters. You can never see a seed. Have you seen a plantain seed before? Oh, banana seed. They are in the banana you are eating. 
when you open it, you see that black, black, black thing in the middle? It, these are the seed. The seed does not look like the fruit. Never despise somebody when it's a seed. <laughs> Many only recognize fruits. And they say, oh, I like this one. When you see a seed, by the grace of God, I have grace to see seeds. I can see somebody who is about to make it. And all I need to do is water. I say, you are blessed. You are going to make it. Pass here, pass here, pass here. Put your leg here, put your leg here. The person gets it say, man of God, this is your portion. I say, you are correct. So God, am I teaching here? So that inside Adam, he was not going to make anything new. Can I tell you this? God is never going to give you anything new. You are a perfectly made being who has the ability and the potential to make it. But you cannot find the womb. You are a womb. You cannot find your seed. But there's going to be a connection this year. The Bible said the righteous shall flourish. They shall bear fruit in their old age. Because of our year of righteousness, if even you are 100 years, you are going to bear fruit. If even you are 80 years, you are going to bear fruit. If even you are 40 years, you are going to bear fruit. If I'm talking to you, shall be yes. How can somebody who has not had her menses for six years, womb removed, get pregnant during this time of fasting? It is a miracle, right? God does the impossible. God does the impossible. And I can see my God making the impossible. You will meet somebody and something when you will tell you, this is the bone of the bone. Please, I taught you, fruition is not only on marriage area. Don't be, don't be deceived. You see, what we share about me penal. I love you. You marry the person. That is the area for children. Are you with me? But Deuteronomy 28 4 talks about fruit of the body, fruit of the ground, fruit of the cattle, fruit of the goat. So there are levels of fruit. Sometimes you can meet a woman or a man and the person you meet has all the three. The person has the anointing to give you fruit of children, fruit of finances, fruit of buying property. That's a virtuous woman. But if you don't have it too and you only got a woman that can give you fruit of the body, may God give you friends, associations, connections. I think you are not here at all. If you are shut, I receive the connection. So Abraham goes home, and the first thing Sarah did that failed the test was Sarah told the husband that I know I can't give birth. So get a husband, get a lady, and get pregnant. And I always say that Abraham was not too good in that area. He was already giving up. That is why if your wife says go and do that, why don't you say, sweet, that God will make a way. Don't give up. As soon as, as soon as the wife said, he said, to God be the glory, great things he has done. As soon as Abraham sleeps with Hagar, I wonder if they even slept or they kissed. Small touch. Small tattoo. It didn't, I'm sure it didn't even go inside. Around the center cycle. Pa! Hey, guy is pregnant. Then Sarah watches as hey, guy is moving. And Sarah begins to say, no, no. I have what it takes. I can't watch my maid succeed and I won't succeed. Until you come to a place of telling yourself, I can, no one can do it for you. I know you won't clap because you want somebody to do it for you. Hebrews 11, 11 says, by faith, Sarah herself also 
There comes a time you don't need the faith of your husband. You need your own faith. But inside you lies what it takes. There comes a time you don't need the faith of another person. You need your own faith. Because what God wants to do has to do with you. We can encourage you. We can motivate you. We can pray for you. It is all to water your seed. And I came here this morning to tell somebody. I can see inside you. There is a seed inside you. And that seed, if you can rise up to yourself. said, I can't. I can't take this nonsense anymore. I can't take this poverty anymore. I can't take this sickness anymore. I can't take this trouble anymore. Inside me lies what it takes. Then Sarah herself also. So one day, Sarah, Sarah Abraham was there in the room with Hagar. I said, Hagar, out. Abraham said, What are you coming to do? He said, Sweetheart, I miss you. Abraham would say, Ah. They went inside. One man, two man. Sarah says, let Hagar go. Abraham said, then who will bear my property? Are you fool? Let the fool. Get out of here. Then Sarah said, me too. Amen, so so. Abraham! Me too. Shout me too. Shout me too. I'll buy my car. When, you see, when God gets tired of people helping you, he asks you to help yourself. You will never know what you have until you have been put in a tight corner. If a lion, you say you can't run, you are sick. Let a lion chase you and see if you can't run. Or you say, lion, you know I can't run, chew me. So God looks at you and says, my son, my daughter, you must get this thing going. That house you can build it. That ministry you can build it. That thing can be done. So what God begins to do to you that he said, Lion, chase him. But Lion doesn't have a teeth. You are running. You get to the place, you finish. Only for the lion to come and Lion said, Oh, I was not sent to kill you. I was sent to motivate you. That trouble is to motivate you. That pain is to motivate you. That trouble. The Bible said, look, the devil is roaring like a lion. He is not a lion. He is just roaring. Jesus is a real lion. <laughs> In Genesis chapter 30, Jacob marries Rahel. And Rahel, I think verse 1 or 2, Rahel comes to his husband and says, give me children, lest I die. Hey. And the husband said, Am I God? You see, that nonsense must live your life. Jacob, you are making Leah pregnant. When it comes to Rahel, you say, Am I God? Is it God who is going to get the lady pregnant? God, I wait on you. God said, I'm waiting for you. I know a lot of men of God who are still in Achimata Forest. They are still praying for when God will call them. You are still waiting. Climbing trees. Waiting for the call of God. When Jesus is coming soon, you are still waiting. People became great at eight years. People were kings at eight years. You are too old. At age 12, Jesus knew his potential. You, you are too old. Joseph, by 17, was already thinking prime minister and he was in prison. You, you are too old. And when Ryo, um, Ryo said, give me children lest I die, he said, am I God? And look at Ryo. The answer from the husband made her go crazy. She also went and didn't believe in herself. What did she do? She also said, sleep with my maid. But when it came to Rebecca, oh God, Rebecca didn't give maid. Oh. <laughs> Rebecca, <laughs> That is why Rebecca is the only one who gave birth to twins. She gave birth to the double. 
You see, Abraham gave some to Hagar. Don't share it. Jacob gave some to Leah. But Rebecca, Rebecca and the husband agreed. And the Bible said, and Isaac, the only person who prayed for the wife to give birth was Isaac. Abraham was waiting on God. Jacob said, I am not God. Isaac went to God. And Isaac entreated the Lord on behalf of the womb. I have a capital. Why is my business not succeeding? I am beautiful. Why am I not getting married? I have what it takes. Why is life not succeeding? Not. I know, sir, me, I mean, sir, I'm in fata. You say you want to marry me. Please, have you considered my friend? He's good, though. Read here. Look, Abraham needed to walk in his own faith. Sarah needed to walk in his own faith. Even Isaac needed to walk in his own faith by putting himself down for Abraham to use him as a sacrifice. There comes a level that the prayer of saints can't help you. Even the prayer of your pastor can't help you. If you jump, you will come down. But if you take time to build a ladder to stand on, Nobody can bring you down. And God knows that there's a level he wants to take you. And he wants to build your inner capacity. One day I went to God and said, God, God, I don't understand this. There are people who have asked me, if you need money, send me a message, I'll send you money. Anything I want to send, you tell me no. Say, Francis, don't ask for money. This building, I, the Lord, I'm building it. I said, huh? Wonderful. And is he not building it? Why? Because God doesn't want anybody to take the glory. God doesn't want anybody to take the full. There comes a time God wants you to go back, look back, kneel down and say, I have encountered God for myself. And I know this God. Rebecca went to the husband and the husband laid hands and prayed and prayed after 20 years of marriage. These are the Abraham gave birth after 40. Um, 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 Isaac only took seven years for, for Rahel to give birth. Isaac waited 20 years and said 20 years is enough. And I want to tell you somebody, we are in 2021. It is enough. It is enough. As for this year, Isaac must pray for her, Rebecca. You must lay hands on that business. You must lay hands on that home. You must lay hands on that life. And he said, other people can succeed. By me too, I must succeed. Other people can make it. By me I can make it. So Isaac prayed and the woman was pregnant. And as look at it. The Bible didn't say Isaac inquired. The Bible said the woman went to God and inquired of the Lord. Why am I like this? The woman knew God. Most of the patriarchs, their wife, didn't know God. Their husbands knew God. But their wives leaned on the God of their father. The God of every alley. This year, God will give you your God. Yeah, I know I'm, I'm, a, I know I'm very powerful and anointed. Yes, I believe that. But you too, you will encounter God for yourself. You can tell someone, say, me, I have met God. I am not humble because of anything, no. Even though I've met God, I'm still low. I'm still a normal somebody. But I know God for myself. Because when you know God for yourself, nobody can deceive you. In these days, everybody says, I see, I see. God is saying, God is saying. If you don't know God for yourself, you are in trouble. Yes, I heard something on radio. I cried. Well, I had a woman of God counseled at somebody and told her, told the man that um, the man went and his manhood was not working. And the pastor, the lady pastor said, 
The Holy Ghost said, until you sleep with me, the thing will not work. And when they slept together, the thing started working. Why wouldn't you believe? And they have been married for seven years. And every time the man goes to the wife, it doesn't work. All he needs to do is go to the prophetess. When they finish doing it, it will work. This man doesn't have God. <laughs> Say, I'll have to be fruitful this year. I didn't hear you. Say, I'll have to be fruitful this year. So Rebecca goes to God in prayer. And God tells him, two nations. Wait a minute. Is it God, what did you say? Two nations. Ah, you don't mean, I'm not carrying human beings. He said, <laughs> they are not other human beings. So, there are two sets of nations. Nobody has had this thing before in the, in the, in the patriarchal line. All the patriarch, none of them has given birth to this double. But because you didn't decide to allow somebody else. Listen, what is it that people have decided not to help you with? Go to God. Can we find a friend so fair, hateful, who in all our sorrows bear? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Let's go. Do thy friends. Come on now. Do thy friends despise and forsake. Take it to the Lord. In his arms, he, his arms, he will take and shield you. Thou will find 